Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship on Sunday, April 19th, the second Sunday of Easter. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. It is Easter season, and we will be hearing many stories of the people in Jesus' life who really had to come to terms with a resurrection prophecy being fulfilled. Today's gospel talks about Thomas, you know, the one who had doubts. When Lent began, we began a journey to help our community, to gather funds and pay off debt. Debt incurred because of medical needs. Debt that can crush your spirit as much as it can crush your credit rating. And Pastor Deanna and I were fairly confident it would be a successful focus. Then COVID-19 came along. Businesses were closed. School was closed. We weren't in the building. And the stock market ticker tape looked like a roller coaster design. And I doubted. And I prayed. As we got closer to our Easter deadline, miracles kept coming. The article from the Mercer Island Reporter engaged our community. It was shared by many of you and by the Synod. You, the people of Holy Trinity, were exceedingly generous. The kids dropped off their banks, and even the folks on the board of Lutheran Campus Ministry donated to our total. And our final total exceeded our goal. Medical debt, currently held by the people of King County, $2 million in debt will be purchased next Friday. And forgiven. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Our worship begins with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, 
you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for the salvation through water, for the water in our fonts and in our homes and for all water everywhere. Breathe in us your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, I found a great book on my shelf to share with you today. It's called That's Good, That's Bad. And it's by a woman named Marjorie Kyler. One day, a little boy went to the zoo with his mother and his father. They bought him a shiny red balloon. It lifted him high up into the sky. Wow! Oh, that's good! Oh, that's bad. The balloon drifted for miles and miles until it came to a hot, steamy jungle. It broke on the branch of a tall, prickly tree. Oh, that's bad. Oh. That's good. The little boy fell into a muddy river. Splat! He climbed up onto a roly-poly hippopotamus and he rode to shore. Giddy up! Oh, that's good. Oh, that's bad. Ten noisy baboons were squabbling in the grass by the river. They chased that little boy up a tree until he was out of breath. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Oh, 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 oh no. That's good. The baboons wanted to play. They wanted to play vine swing with the little boy. What fun. The little boy grabbed a vine and swung out of their reach. Whee! Oh, that's good. Oh, that's bad. The vine was a big, scary snake that wiggled and jiggled and hissed. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. No, that's good. The little boy lost his grips, whoops, and landed on the back of a giraffe. Hooray! Oh, that's good. Oh, no, that's bad. The giraffe leaned over to take a drink, some swampy water. The little boy slid down the giraffe's neck and fell into some quicksand next to an elephant. Slop! Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's good. The elephant grabbed the little boy with its trunk and lifted him up, up, onto its shoulders. Whoosh! 
Oh, that's good. Oh, no. That's bad. The elephant thumped bumpily along to a grassy plain where it stopped to feed. The little boy climbed down its trunk and woke up a daddy lion snoring in the grass. Ooh, that's bad. No, that's good. When the lion saw the little boy, it purred and licked the little boy's face. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's bad. The little boy got all wet and sticky. Yuck. And he ran deeper into the jungle. It was dark as night. Ooh, and the little boy, he was afraid. He sat down and he started to cry. Oh, no, oh, that's bad. Oh, that's good. His tears made such a big puddle that a stork came along to have a drink. It picked up the little boy with its beak. Oh, that's good. That's bad. The stork flew the little boy across the dark, windy sky. Flap, 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 flap. The little boy thought he would never see his parents again. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. The stork knew where it was going. It took the little boy back to the zoo and dropped him into his parents' arms. Plop! His mother and his father were so happy to see him, they gave him a big hug and a big kiss. Oh, that's good. No, that's great. That's good. No, that's great that the little boy got to go back with his parents after his grand adventure in this story. Sometimes things that we think are really good turn out to be you know, kind of bad. Like, mm, I love ice cream. And if I eat mm, three big bowls of ice cream, that's bad. And you know, I don't really like broccoli. That's bad. But it's good for me to eat it. Right now, when things are kind of crazy in our houses and with school and with our friends and with our grandmas and grandpas, when it's kind of crazy, when we have to stay home, we can't go visit. We can't go to the playground. We have to do our schoolwork at home. That can feel like it's all bad. I wonder if there could be some good. I learned a new game that we played. Well, really, it's an old game, but we forgot. It was Parcheesi. You can ask your parents about it. That was a good part about not seeing my friends. I don't play on a playground, but I can go for a walk, and that's good. And when I go for my walk, I wear a mask, and that's very good. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hi, I'm Lizzie Park, coming to you from the living room of my house, and our first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14 and 22 to 32. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, 
a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hi, I'm Charlotte Park, and I'm sitting uh, on the deck uh, of my house. So the second reading for today is from chapter one, the book of Peter. Uh, being blessed by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into living, hope throughout resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that is un imperishable, undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed for the last time in this you rejoice even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice that his indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hi, this is Charlotte and Christy Park, and we are going to be reading Psalm 16 out on our deck. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me right, night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand, and I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy one sit the pit you will show me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore we join in singing the gospel acclamation alle 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 alleluia alle 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 alleluia alle 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 Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm going to do something today that sometimes I've done in worship when we're together. It's a little simpler there, perhaps more challenging here, because I want to touch base on each of the readings that you've heard this morning on this second Sunday in the season of Easter. So it'll be a bit of one-sided conversation about the texts. So you might want to have your bulletin or you might want to get a Bible handy. And you can look at this later as well. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. This Jesus, it says at the end, this Jesus, this man from Nazareth, this Jesus from Nazareth. God has attested to you, God has proven to you through deeds of power and wonder and signs that were done by God through Jesus among you. That's what's written. Jesus, with God acting through him in the midst of your presence, it's this Jesus that was killed. You were there with him. You know this. This man was killed. This Jesus. And then God raised him. After God had freed him from death, because it was impossible for death to hold Jesus in its power. It is this Jesus, the one who was among you, the one who showed you with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that he had power from God. You were there. It is this Jesus that God raised. And we are witnesses. Our second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Peter, where it's written that we have been given a new birth through a living hope. A new birth, a new life, a new life that is granted in hope, a hope that is alive, a hope that is dynamic, a faith that in the words of Martin Luther is a living, busy, and active thing. We are given an inheritance, a promise out of this hope, a promise that is imperishable, that is constant, that will not rot. 
not like the food in our fridge. The promise of God, of this living hope and life, is imperishable. It is constant. It is undefiled. It is clean and safe. And it is unfading, clear and bright as the first day that God gave it. Peter was writing to a people in a community of faith who were being persecuted because of their faith. They were facing challenges and difficulties in their life, various trials. Now, I don't know about you. I don't feel as though I'm being persecuted for my faith anymore, but I am certainly experiencing various trials. And I'm sure you are too. And this premise, this promise that has been given to us of an imperishable and undefiled and unfading promise of living hope, oh, that's our strength and that's our truth during these days. And all of that, Peter says, leads to the salvation of our souls. The salvation, the healing the healing of what is broken in us, the healing of what is a mess inside of us, the healing of our souls, the healing of who we are comes in this living hope. And then there's the Easter story from John's Gospel. Did you notice once again it's getting dark? It's evening, and it's still the day of resurrection. It's evening, it's getting dark, and it's still the same day. Oh, it's a week later for us now, but it's the same day for the story in John's Gospel. But it kind of sounds like how I feel. It's the same day, one long day that feels like a week in one day. <laughs> anyway, the disciples have heard the witness. They've heard the report of Mary Magdalene. And it's dark, and the doors are locked, and they're afraid. And right there, in the middle of everything, Jesus shows up. No matter the dark, no matter the lock, no matter the fear, right there in the middle of it all, Jesus shows up. Peace, he says. Peace be with you. And then a breath of the Holy Spirit the sacred, life-giving spirit is given in the dark while locked away in the midst of fear. And then a week passes. Seven more days. <laughs> Yet, here we are. As we listen to the story, here we are still on the same day. And I don't think it's just me, but that's how it feels right now. One long day marked by seven nights. The doors are shut and Jesus shows up right in the middle of everything. And Jesus offers himself as balm for the fear. And Jesus speaks a blessing for you. Jesus offers himself and speaks a blessing to those who have not seen. That's you and me. Jesus offers a blessing for those who have not seen that we may still find that we believe even after days that seem like weeks and weeks that pass as one long day. There's more. There's more, John says, more than we ever knew, 
more than we could ever imagine. And what we've been told, what we've been given, it is enough. It is enough for life. I don't know, I couldn't quite get into these texts this week. I have a question that keeps rolling through my head and maybe in yours as well. When? When will things get back to normal? When will things get back to normal? This Jesus, God raised, you are witnesses. When will things get back to normal? The healing of our souls will be found in the living hope. When, when will things get back to normal? I feel like the disciples probably were asking the same question. When will we get back to our lives? When will we know what to do and how to do it and where to go and how to manage in a world that looks the same, yet somehow everything has changed? Nothing is the same. This Jesus God raised, we are witnesses. This living hope heals our souls. When will things get back to normal? And as I think about it, as I think about the days and the weeks, I wonder, do I want to go back? Do you? Do you want to go back to a normal that overlooks the work of grocery store employees or mail carriers? or custodians, or healthcare workers, or first responders? Do you want to go back to a normal that includes such great disparity in healthcare and technology and resources for shelter or food? Do we want to go back to a normal where some are paid very little for work that we now call essential? Do we want to go back to normal with profits trumping protection? When will things get back to normal? That's not my question. You see, normal is not what I want. I want God to raise me. I want God to raise me out of death-dealing ways. No, I want God to raise us. I want God to raise us up from our death-dealing ways. When will things get back to normal? That's not my question. You see, normal is not what I want. I want to hear the voice of Jesus speaking peace. I want to experience blessing for our spirits and communities as new life is breathed into us. I don't want normal. I want this life-giving spirit to heal our souls so, so that we will step out and reach for one another with a strength of compassion that is more powerful than fear and stronger than death. When will things get back to normal? That is not my question, because normal is not what I want. I want to follow the path of life. I want to experience the fullness of joy as together we come into that new day. When, will, when we will know what to do and how to do it and where to go and how to manage a world that looks the same, yet somehow everything has changed. You see, we can't go back to normal, for nothing is the same, except, except for the love of God 
revealed in Jesus for you, for the world, for all time. Let that be our normal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Let us pray. O God, we give thanks on this day for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, and that we are raised up with him every day in our life and in the life to come. O Lord, we strive to set our minds on things that are above, not things that are on earth, not because we want to run away from the reality of this world, but because your love for us the power and strength you intend for us is greater than the trials we face. As we go about our daily lives, let us not forget that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-discipline. We pray this day for the inner strength to cope and that you would send us helpers in our various needs, whether those would be physical, financial, emotional, spiritual or social. Let us be a blessing to others with gifts, with friendship, with smiles, with encouragement. We pray this day especially for those who see to our needs during this pandemic, for medical and emergency staff, for their safety, for renewed strength in their exhaustion, for encouragement in the face of loss, for wisdom in managing resources and that they would have opportunity for self-care. We pray also for the safety of all those in our supply chain and those who provide essential services and for their families. We give thanks for the care all these people give us and for the diligence of researchers. We pray for children and youth whose school and activities and celebrations are all interrupted and for parents and teachers. For all those who want to work but are suddenly without income, help them to find the resources they need. We pray also for those stricken by the virus, for the poor and the homeless, for all who are sick or grieving and now are alone, for elderly people who are isolated, and especially this day for Sandy, Kathy, Grayson, and Mona. We lift up to your care Chris, Larry, Dorothy and Cannon. And now hear us as we name others in need of your presence. We pray for those who lead our country and the nations around the world, for their wisdom and humility, for their frankness and truth telling, for those who keep us informed. We give thanks that you are a God who dwells with us here in the midst of our confusion and illness and pain, and that you will always raise us up. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
us pray now using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.